Chapter 6. Nowhere to Turn. May's voice broke. You can do it, little brother, please. Ranger pawed at the boy's shoulder. Lee lifted himself onto his elbows again and grimaced. He took a deep breath, shaking breath, and pulled himself backward a few inches. Yes, May was crying now. Keep going, please. Lee squeezed his eyes closed and clenched his teeth. Inch by inch, he dragged himself out from under the shelves. He's clear, Lily said, finally letting out her breath. They let go, and the shelf thudded to the floor. Lily's hand throbbed. She didn't think she could have held on a moment longer. The girls rushed to Lee's side. His face was pale and gray as smoke. One of his legs was twisted in an unnatural angle. When Lily bent to touch it, Lee cried out. I think his leg is broken, Lily said. He needs a doctor. We have a small wagon in the back, May said. Father uses it to bring goods from the harbor. I'll fetch it and we can take him to the dispensary. Lily nodded. We need a way to keep his leg steady if we're going to move him. I don't want to make it worse. She searched out a thin board from one of the broken shelves. While May went to find the wagon, Lily took the sheet from her bundle of bedding. She put the board up against it, against Lee's leg, and as slowly as she could, eased the sheet underneath to wrap it tight. Ranger sat close to the boy, leaning against him as Lily worked. Still, Lee cried out in pain every time she touched his leg. When May returned, they eased one of Mr. Wong's jackets underneath Lee and, Lee and used it to lift him into the wagon. Slowly, Lily and May hauled the wagon out of the shop and down the uneven street. Every time they tried to go more quickly, the wagon hit a bump and Lee cried out again. Finally, they reached the Tung Hua Dispensary, the only place for medical care in Chinatown. Lily and May pulled the wagon up to the door, but no one came when they knocked. They've all gone up to Van Ness, said a man rushing down the street. Try Central Emergency Hospital at City Hall. Then he continued on his way. I know where that is, May said. I went to City Hall with Father one day to deliver some papers. She pointed up toward Market Street, where new clouds of smoke were rising into the purple sky. Lily took a deep breath. She nodded and picked up the handle of Lee's wagon. Let's go. Lee moaned as the wagon bounced over the cobblestones all the way down Stockton Street. Lily's heart felt as if it might break in two every time he cried. It was a blessing when he finally passed out. Market Street teemed with people, but none of them offered help. Women in dresses and Sunday hats and men in suits rushed along toward the ferry landing. The air swirled with smoke, dust, and wild rumors. Some people said the earthquake had shaken America all the way from the Atlantic to the Pacific. There were reports of a tidal wave in Chicago, and one man claimed that Salt Lake City had simply disappeared. Lily wondered if the whole world might be ending. Snapped power lines lay on the street, twisting and hissing like snakes. Whole faces were ripped off of homes. Lily could look inside the rooms as if she was peering into a dollhouse. For nearly an hour, Ranger walked beside the wagon as they made their way through the crumbling city. The wagon thumped th over another ridge, and Ranger heard his first aid kit clunk against something else in Lily's bundle. He wondered when he could get to go home. He found Lily in the shaking, crumbling house. He'd gone with her to save Lee, but the old metal box wasn't humming yet. That meant Ranger's, Ranger's work wasn't finished. Looking around the smoky, fear-filled place, he worried it might be a long time before he saw Luke and Sadie again. Lily stopped and stared. It's up here, May said. Right, oh, Lily stopped and stared. The earthquake had shaken the stones off City Hall's grand tower. Only the metal frame remained. It looked to Lily as if a whisper of wind might knock it to the ground. Bricks lay piled in dusty heaps all around the building. Chunks of broken columns were everywhere. It's in ruins. Lily cried. She rushed up to the soldier on a horse. Please, where are the doctors from the hospital? She asked. My brother's, my friend's brother is hurt. 
The man lifted his chin toward a nearby building. They've moved everyone to Mechanic's Pavilion. Lily and May start, started off again, pulling the wagon with Ranger at their side. The streets were littered and twisted with rails and fallen stonework. Very few steps they have to lift the wagon over a crack or wheel it down a slab of broken concrete. Lee had woken up and was moaning again. Lily paused and put a hand on his pale forehead. It was cold and clammy. His breathing was shallow and fast. All around them, the distant smoke seemed to be closing in. Were the fires getting worse? Lily had said a quiet prayer that the doctors and soldiers had promised would still be at the pavilion when they arrived. Please let there be room for him, Lily thought, and please let the doctors be willing to help. 